What about um, the looking at protein? Obviously, we talked earlier, it's um, the more you're doing, right, the more requirements you have for that and for those amino acids as well. Talking about this, because we kept, we were talking there a little bit around digestion as well. So for a busy woman who is training, like myself and many of the women that are listening to this podcast, sometimes if you've got a lot going on, it's school term time, it's not summer holidays, it's difficult to get that overnight kind of 12 hours where you're not eating unless you're willing to then train fasted and leave a period afterwards. That's the way that I would <laughs> get that in, um, which is... Okay. <laughs> If you're listening on audio show, Stacey's shaking her head at me. Um, and so actually before this podcast, Stacey, I did go and have a protein shake. Uh, and Good work. And some blueberries and different things. Yeah, so maybe that's why I'm switched on. No, I'm joking. Um, so when I get back, it's difficult, right? Because you're trying to balance. As a busy mum who's working, you're trying to balance a lot of things. And you know that mm-hmm. you also, my digestion feels better when I let it rest. Some people will say, and uh, people who talk about muscle and longevity, that actual t- actually total protein is what the science shows and that we don't need to worry so much about protein timing. I've heard you talk about how that's more on men. Um, how much do we need to worry about the timing of protein and how can we balance this against having periods where we're not eating? There's a few things I want to explain here. So when we talk about exercise, exercise is a fasted state. We see that exercise does all of the things in a more structured and a stronger adaptation than fasting. So we're talking about extensing uh, extension of our telomere length. We're th- talking about getting rid of the z- zombie cells. We're talking about autophagy. All of that happens with exercise. So if we're looking at an overnight fast of 12 hours, that's if you don't exercise. Right. So if we're looking at trying to get the benefits of an overnight fast without exercise, yeah, you need 12 to 13 hours to really help get the body and the system moving in the direction that we want for a longer health span. But when you exercise, you are also creating a better environment for a better health span, a longer health span. So for you, I want to bring this point up if you're talking about you know trying to extend to get into fasted training i was on another conversation with another woman down in oz and she wanted to really work to increase her strength so she did a dedicated one year total strength program and part of it she also wanted to increase her total lean mass because she had dexas and she's like i really need to build my lean mass she spent an entire year following a um, particular program and she got really strong. She got into triple digits for a deadlift. She was one and a half times her body weight in a full squat. She went to get her DEXA. There was only a hundred gram increase in her lean mass. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. But then I found out why, because she was doing fasted training and she was delaying her food intake until after the kids had gone to school. So that means that she was doing all of her training And she could stimulate the central nervous system, sure. And you can get neural pathways to increase the muscle contractile strength, but you're not giving the body the amino acids it needs to grow. When you start doing a heavy strength program, you need to eat to build that tissue. So when we're looking at protein and protein timing, it's really important for women to understand that if you're doing fasted training, you're really compromising your body's ability to adapt. And when we look at our protein and our muscle protein synthesis and the mTOR that happens with protein intake, it's up to two hours after exercise that we see a boost for women, and then it starts to die off. So it does matter when we're eating our protein. One, to build muscle. Two, to shut down that breakdown state that happens with things like low energy availability that's a very high precedence in a recreational female athletes. And then when we're thinking about protein throughout the day, why not take every eating opportunity to have some protein and fiber so we can hit our macros that we need, we can hit our fiber, and then we still have a longer time of no eating because we've hit all that in the hours that we have when we're awake when our body needs it. That's my, that's my lecture to you. 
My lecture. <laughs> I think I had one on the last one. <laughs> no, I, I actually, but it, yeah, I have changed because I did eat. I know. Um, but good. what's really interesting there, because I actually want to spell this out for people, because really, really interesting what you said. So she did a year. She improved her strength. She got really strong, right? And I can validate this. I am also very strong. I can jump up, pull myself up, do anything pretty much that I want. However, mm-hmm. what she didn't get was the lean mass. This is actually the muscle mass, which is the size. And this Mm -hmm. seems important to me because actually it's muscle mass that helps regulate things like insulin sensitivity, right? Which we know women have problems with. So she's strong. She's going to have good bone density. She can lift. Um, She's got all those benefits. But in terms of the actual body composition and the metabolic benefits, she sounds like she's missing out. Missing the mark. Missing the mark. Missed a whole year opportunity of building that lovely muscle that helps pretty much as a glucose sink. Yeah, exactly. So and how many women yeah. say, I put a CGM and I'm really worried I'm getting these spikes and I'm really struggling and they're not yeah. optimizing for this. Did she then, has she done a, an after like where she's pre-fueled? Because here's the thing, I've not got yet. really good, she's not yet, because not yet. I'm interested in this. I'm going to go get another DEXA done because I have got good, <laughs> thank you to your work, at pre-fueling post-exercise, but I still can't get my head around eating before. So I'm having caffeine and amino acids when I'm exercising. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I can't actually stick food in my mouth (laughs) because I don't train as well. I'm going to be honest. I just don't train as well. I'm so conditioned into what I'm doing. I feel sluggish. Yeah, because it's a learned response. So when you start putting some food in, then your body starts wanting that food when you wake up. Because we've through our culture, our diet culture, women have trained themselves not to be hungry in the morning and to feel like they're overly full if they have something first thing in the morning. We look at all the metabolic parameters of our appetite hormones and the way our brain is telling us that we need to eat, that it's a disconnect. The body is telling us from our appetite hormones and our cortisol and all of our perturbations of our our hormones that we need food first thing in the morning. But in our head, we have had this self-talk through the diet industry that you don't need to eat. So so many women have trained themselves and go, oh, I'm not hungry until 10 o'clock. It's like if you give your body food within a half an hour of waking up, it's going to learn that that's normal. And all your appetite hormones and everything is going to be regulated and you're going to feel hungry. So for you, it's like, why not have protein coffee? Have some almond milk with protein and add a shot of espresso. And if you don't like coffee, then you can think about a matcha a latte with protein. Why would that be better than like essential amino acids? Because aren't they just very bioavailable? Why would protein coffee be better? Because you're getting calories with the protein coffee and you're getting whole protein. Okay. Okay. Because when you're looking at the protein coffee with something like almond milk in it, you're getting a little bit of carb, you're getting some um, more calories from that. It's not a robust amount. It might be a hundred to 120, depending on how much protein you're putting in there and almond milk. But it's, if you're looking at just caffeine and amino acids, that's nothing. And the amino essential amino acids are not used the same as a whole protein. They circulate, but they don't do the same kind of trigger as a whole protein. Okay, this is interesting then. Um, so we just so people understand, because this is not going to be just me. This is a lot of women, right, that are in this situation. So we're, we're improving uh, autophagy through the exercise, telomere length. And in fact, I'm going to link to the episode that I did with Nicolina Lout, where we went through all my biological age, because all of those are optimized through the exercise, the nutrition I'm doing. But the point that you're talking about here is really important, because when I do, and I know, you know, it is obviously you're the expert, but I want people to understand is when I have, I haven't done a recent DEXA, but when I do like an in-body scan, this is coming up. <laughs> I'm going to admit this, this is coming up for me, is that I'm very lean, I'm very strong, but I don't actually have as much muscle. So it sounds like I'm going to do this as an experiment. I can improve this. What it doesn't uh, account for is when we're talking about digestion, this is the bit that I think women being so overloaded is how can we optimize that? You've mentioned glutamine, but if we're eating late, one thing that I found is actually just maybe focusing on protein and veggies as in non 
non-starchy uh, veggies can just help me get into that deep sleep better. So actually front-loading more of those carbohydrates, and maybe that's the balance because I've noticed my metrics improve. Would you say that for the woman who's listening to this and is just really busy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we look at um, research that goes back for decades where you front load the day with more carb and then you start tapering off and having more protein and fiber towards the evening. That works with circadian rhythm, works with hormone pulses. It works with the way our body regulates our appetite hormones and our blood glucose. And yeah, I mean, we hear the old adage from our grandparents, uh, breakfast like a king and dinner like a pauper. And it's the same idea is you want to fuel during the day when your body needs it and can use it and then start tapering down to have the reparation type foods that you want for sleep. And that's protein and really good fiber foods to help with your gut. Mm. Yeah, which is the opposite to you here on a lot of the bro podcasts where they're talking about the fact that they fast and then they have this massive meal of protein and carbs at night, which yeah, yeah is the opposite. Um, exactly. 